Hi, and welcome to The Kidney Coach, and thank you for being part of our community. I am Fiona Chin. I am the co-founder of Kidney Coach, as well as the co-writer of The Kidney Disease Solution. And I wanted to talk to you today about what I eat in a day, because it's something that I get asked about a lot. Now, I'm not dealing with chronic kidney disease, but I am dealing with a chronic autoimmune disease, and that's multiple sclerosis. And the diet that you eat in something like multiple sclerosis is fairly similar to what we'd be eating with kidney disease. So I just want to walk you through that and I'll talk you through where the similarities are and maybe where you can make some differences. Now, one of the major drivers of um, any disease, including kidney disease, and I talk about this a lot in the YouTube channel, is inflammation. And it's one of the things that will also drive things like multiple sclerosis. So one of the primary things that I want to do in my diet is I want to keep my inflammation levels down. And this is how I do that. So breakfast, let's start there. So I do something called intermittent fasting, and I do that probably four days a week. And intermittent fasting is where you eat between a, um, and it varies, but I eat between an eight hour window. So that means I'd have my first meal at around 11 o'clock in the morning and my last meal around six o'clock. And that gives my body plenty of time of a 16 hour fasting window. And that frees up energy to help my body heal rather than having to digest all the time. The other thing that intermittent fasting has been shown to do is to be highly anti-inflammatory, which is what I was just talking about. Um, and it is also really great at stimulating something called stem cells. Now, stem cells are programmed cells. And what they do is they come out and they help heal tissue. So you want to stimulate stem cells because those stem cells can go into damaged tissue and help that tissue to heal. And whether that be for me, my myelin sheath, or if you're dealing with kidney disease, your kidneys, or if you've got diabetes or cardiovascular disease, stimulating the release of stem cells from tissue in your body and from bone marrow and other um, organs like the spleen will actually help your kidney tissue and any tissue that's damaged to heal. So that's why intermittent fasting is so great. It's also great at bringing down inflammation, as I mentioned. It's fabulous at re-regulating blood sugar levels and it frees up available energy to enhance your body to work on healing itself rather than digesting because the energy required to digest is actually a lot, especially if you're eating and choosing poor quality foods. If I am having breakfast on the other three days, I would generally have something like this green smoothie that I make up in batches um, that lasts about two days in the fridge. For me in here is cucumber, kale, uh, pineapple. Pineapple's really high in things uh, like bromelain, which is really highly anti-inflammatory, which is why I put it in there. It also makes my um, bitter green vegetables taste better. I have half an avocado in there because I'm looking for the good fats, which are highly anti-inflammatory. If you happen to be on a low potassium diet, you would omit that. I also put in collagen uh, powder in there to help heal my gut. Collagen is really great at, um, if you've got something called leaky gut disease, which is where the tight gut junctions in your gut, which should look like this, end up looking like this. Collagen helps to glue them back together and that stops food particles passing into the bloodstream at too early, provoking a immune response and increasing inflammation. So that's where collagen can be super useful. That would be my breakfast. Uh, then if I am fasting, I may still have that at 11 a.m. And then I'll generally have a, a bowl of berries. And in that will be organic blueberries, uh, raspberries and strawberries because they're my favourite. But any of those really high antioxidant berries are fantastic in things like kidney disease. In fact, I'm sure we wrote an article on it on our article page if you go to kidneycoach.com and it will talk about all the amazing healing properties of berries. They're very high in phytonutrients, which are really great for uh, healing and anti-inflammatory work. Then after that would be lunch. For me, that'll be a protein source and a pile of veggies. And I'll talk about vegetables uh, at the end there, but I would generally have, um, yeah, I would generally have a uh, piece of grilled fish or um, I might have a piece of chicken. I do eat red meat. We definitely recommend if you've got kidney disease to omit all red meat from your diet, but we do say a little bit of chicken and fish is totally fine. Um, for me, I want to get a good quality protein source in there. So it's generally fish or chicken. And I do have about two or three vegetarian um, days a week myself anyway. And then lots of vegetables. So if it's a warm day, I'll have a nice salad with some mushrooms in there and some um, colored vegetables. And again, lots of leafy greens. I'll get to that in a minute. And then I'll have an afternoon snack uh, generally, which is really rich in good quality fats. That might be half an avocado. Again, if you're omitting potassium, you would keep that out. I like olives in fact I love olives so I would have probably a third of a cup of olives because they're really high in alenic acid and other really great things that are really good for us 
And then um, I would have maybe a handful of nuts and seeds now, no more than a small handful, and they're raw and unsalted. As soon as you roast your nuts, you oxidize the fat in there, and then that becomes uh, carcinogenic potentially and pro-inflammatory. So you wanna make sure that if you are having nuts and seeds that they're raw and unsalted, that's really important. Um, that would be my afternoon snack. And then for uh, dinner, again, for me, it's protein and vegetables. So I'm looking at getting nine cups of vegetables a day, and that's really important. And the reason that I go for nine cups of vegetables a day is vegetables are really high in so many phytochemicals and phytonutrients, which are really important to help the body heal. So uh, when I say nine cups, it's broken into three cups of leafy greens, and that might be things like collards, silver beets, one of my favorite, uh, kale, spinach, um, anything that's got this leafy green sort of uh, look to it. It's got so many amazing phytonutrients in there, which are great for fighting disease. So three cups of those, then three cups of sulfur vegetables. Now, sulfur vegetables are really amazing at helping the liver clear toxins. So if you happen to be on medications because you've also got diabetes or cardiovascular disease, sulfur vegetables are really great at helping to clear those through the liver. They also, um, sulfur vegetables help maintain something called methylation. And methylation is really important for healthy DNA expression. So that's why we really like sulfur vegetables. And sulfur vegetables include things like onion, garlic, mushrooms, bok choy, kale, um, not kale, sorry, broccoli, um, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, those sort of things. So you want three cups of those and then three cups of colored vegetables. And that might include things like uh, bell peppers, um, carrots, um, your blueberries, your berries can be included in the colored vegetable portion, uh, rhubarb. Um, it's often a great thing that I like to uh, stew at night um, and have as a dessert with a tiny little bit of apple in it. Um, and then uh, and beetroot and things like that. So you want nine cups of those vegetables a day. So dinner again would be a stir fry, a slow cooked meal of some description, and then a protein for me. And again, I'm generally going for chicken um, or good quality non-farmed fish. I also do eat red meat twice a week, and that would be biodynamic, organic, uh, pasture-fed meat because it's much higher if um, the um, cattle has been raised on grass and not uh, grain, it's much higher in healthy omega-3s and so it's less inflammatory. Again, if you've got kidney disease, we recommend that you take out all red meat from your diet because it does, the protein puts an extra burden on the kidneys. A little bit of chicken and fish is totally okay. Uh, and then Again, if you've got kidney disease, you could add in things like fermented soy products, which have got some uh, research behind it that it could be useful in kidney disease like tempeh, tofu. Um, I don't eat any grain, and that's purely because grain has been shown to be pro-inflammatory, especially to the brain. Uh, if I was to eat a little bit every now and then, then I go for gluten-free grains like uh, wild rice or a little bit of buckwheat. Now I do have a sweet tooth, I am human, so if I really want a dessert or something delicious, I generally go for my berries, but otherwise I would go for really good quality chocolate because that's my favourite thing. And I go for a brand called Panna, which is an Australian brand, but my understanding is I've travelled around the world, I see it everywhere, and the reason I like Panna is it's gluten and dairy free. Um, and it's got no sugar in it, in cane sugar. It's got a little bit of coconut sugar in there, but the total sugar intake per serve is only 3.6 grams, which is quite low. And I tend to only have one or two pieces. When you eat good quality dark chocolate, you smell it first and then you eat it. And, and studies have shown that smelling the chocolate actually hits all the receptors in the brain that um, get lit up when you eat it. And then again, if you're eating good quality dark chocolate, you just won't need as much of it if you're going for cheap um, milk chocolate because it just doesn't fill you up the same way. That would be my snack. And then the other thing I do during the day is make sure I keep my fluids up, which again is really important in things like kidney disease. So I drink a lot of herbal tea. I love the Nana's herbal tea, that's my favorite. Um, and I actually just really like the taste of it, even though I don't have kidney disease, but the nettle in it and a couple of the other herbs are great at driving down inflammation, which again is important for multiple sclerosis. Um, and then I might have some other types of herbal tea and then making sure that I drink enough water as well, it's also super important. The other vegetable that I want to mention, which is fantastic in kidney disease, and one of my favorite vegetables is okra. And they've done lots of studies on okra, and they did a study uh, comparing people with diabetes where they put them on a diabetic 
uh, diet or anti-diabetic diet and another uh, group of people they gave them okra and actually the people that had the okra included in their diet had much better outcomes and didn't go on to develop kidney disease anywhere near as much as people that were put on just a straight anti-diabetic diet and that uh, study and the whole thing about okra is on an article on our website so you can do something called okra water which is really great if you've got diabetes and really easy to do. And then I'd have an okra strew twice a week because I just, I love okra and um, I think it's such a great vegetable. The only other thing I wanna say is that you're an individual and you know your body better than anyone. If uh, no one diet will work for one person. So it's really important that you listen to your body, get some feedback and tweak things. You can always start with the main part of the program. We find it works for 95% of people. I want to say that if, um, you've been put on a low potassium diet, please make sure that that's backed up by blood tests. Studies now show that if a renal dietitian is putting you just as a bread and butter thing on a low potassium diet and you don't need to be, you can make your kidney disease worse because you're emitting out vegetables, especially a lot of the vegetables that I spoke about are high in potassium. Um, but if you take them out and you don't need to, you'll actually um, accelerate the decline of kidney disease. Same with uh, low magnesium and low phosphorus diets. If you don't need to go on them, please make sure that you don't. Uh, it's generally only the end stages of kidney disease and generally when you're doing dialysis and they're adding something to the dialysis, which will change your blood chemistry. And when you're having a blood test, please make sure that they're not using hard tourniquets because that will give you a false uh, bump up in potassium levels. So it's really important that you have blood tests to monitor all of that. We get so much feedback where people are put on low potassium diets only to find out their potassium levels are very normal and they're being taken off some really valuable fruits and vegetables that actually would actually help them heal. So I hope that's been useful. Um, and again, thanks for being part of our community. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at support at kidneycoach.com and our team of naturopaths are all fully qualified. We've all got years of experience there. We're either registered nurses or naturopathic doctors and naturopaths. I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Have a fabulous day and hopefully this has helped. Thanks for being part of our community. Bye.